Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. So today, I'm doing a fuel pump upgrade. Now, I'm just going to go through this. It's going to be a long talking, showing you step-by-step -step instructions for getting your RS7, your C7, C7.5 RS7. So 2014 to 2018 RS7 fuel pump upgraded. Now, I have a spare one here. And the spare one is not flowing as good as, or at least theoretically, that's what the mechanic says, that this doesn't flow as good as the one that came out of the car. So this flows at like 80s, the other one flows at like 90% capacity. So there's two parts to this. Um, this top part here, this top part here is the filter. And there's a fuel pressure regulator. There's a line that goes here straight to the fuel pump. So that's the fuel pump down there. Um, so now that you understand how that works, this is the part that needs to be modified. This line right here. And you need these two parts here so this is a 516 this is a 516 hose two of them because you need to tee off the OEM fuel pump Are you keeping up with me you need to tee off the OEM fuel pump and you need a 516 to a 516 brass so it's E85 safe to a um, one quarter fit in. I'll repeat that. 516, 516, one quarter fit in on this side. You need an extra long 516 so that you can reroute the fuel pump, the secondary fuel pump, to the other side of the floater. That's the problem I'm having right now. So, right now, what I'm going to do is go take that car apart and I'll show you. Well, I guess I can go step by step and show you how to get to the fuel pump. If you have a baby seat, that's a little bit more complicated, but nothing crazy. You need a flathead, um, not the world's longest flathead, but you know, a flathead. And you need a Phillips head. So not a sharp one, but like a, a medium sized Phillips head. Um, just so you can undo these. It'll help if I can get this stored properly. Hold on. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of explaining here, and um, if you're not comfortable doing this, take it to your mechanic. Uh, I will link my mechanic in the description below, and all the links to all of these parts will be in the link, uh, will be in the description of this video down below. Now, this here would look differently for you. I mean, this is mine. This is what it'll look like for you stock. 
mine is just put off to the side this goes to the stock hard lines just gonna tuck the way since I have upgraded 6AN lines all the way to the engine bay, this is what mine looks like. This just pops up. You need a rack to catch all the fuel from the fuel pressure. And these clips are a little different from the typical from the RS5 or B9 clips. They, uh, you pull upwards. This is kind of where you need a flathead. So you pull upwards on this tab and it just pops right off like that nice and easy it's very easy if you need to force it you're probably doing it wrong and once I have these apart I will return back to the video now this part here the second part here is for the secondary fuel pump wiring for the Walbro it's a Walbro 525 there's a specific part number make sure you buy from submit racing or euro tuning i got mine from euro tuning i will put the link in the description below again um for the wow bro make sure you get an original pump there are a ton of chinese junk trash copies on the market for the wow bro 525s don't know why but that's the case it's a 525 not a 535 a 535 will overheat your oem fuel pump module so you want a 525 uh, but not lower than that because it won't supply enough fuel so it's a balance game this wire in here is from radium fuel and this runs to the battery and uh, this one just gets a ground negative underneath there it goes right here so that's pretty straightforward and it wires up to the pump and goes to the hub switch so there's a hub switch in the engine bay and that runs off a of vacuum and just dumb turns the fuel, fuel pump up at 2 psi so if the engine is 2 psi or more the pump will come on it's like i said it's just a dumb hub switch there's nothing intelligent about it all it's doing is reading boost and turning this on that's all it's doing um so this will come on that's why you need to get ds1 tune and tell the car that this pump is here so that everything works together in perfect harmony so that's kind of the idea behind this um i'm gonna get off camera and pull this off undo this this ring is pretty straightforward uh, most newer vacuum audis have this ring you need a flathead and a hammer and you kind of just grab uh one second where is it you just grab one of these nice pretty edges here right here you can see let me get closer right here this ledge right here and you hammer at it um in this direction to unloose it and this way to tighten loosen tighten loosen tighten okay so i've taken the fuel line off i've taken the clips off i've taken the secondary fuel pump connection off as well this here needs to be drilled into the stock top hat of the fuel um of the fuel pump so this would be the fuel filter portion the top of the fuel filter portion um this you just drill the correct hole you're gonna have the stuff with you physically so this is the other end of it it's a it's a threaded connection and sealed so no fuel leak should be there make sure you use the right gaskets and you you install it as you see it here um, pause the video take a screenshot install it as you will so that's how this part here goes now um once you have everything disconnected i just gotta hammer it now this part here you for the main fuel line connection you don't need me to tell you what parts these are if you have an upgraded fuel line from your fuel pump all the way to the engine bay you should already have what this size is um i don't remember what it is i believe it's a 5.8 i have it saved in my amazon um shopping list or whatever so you either have this already or your stock if you have the stock one just put it back but if you have this one, you just undo that one. You don't need me to tell you what that, that is. So I'm going to open this up and then we can get to the part where we tee in the second, the secondary fuel pump into the stock fuel pump. Okay, that's a little all we're doing. It's very simple, very straightforward. All you're doing is the electricals for it connected to the car. 
secondary fuel pump is in there should be on this side as far that way as possible is where you want it to go and um, the lines and all that stuff will go this way and the floater will be that way well this way uh, this way as much as possible so it doesn't catch anything okay so I took the ring off and when I took it off, it just popped right off. Now the reason I'm taking this apart to begin with is because my floater isn't working correctly. So I believe the floater was caught on something. So it's gonna go straight up. As you can see, it connects to those two um, holes right there. And the fact that it popped up like that tells me one of two things. It tells me that it's, it's pressurized and there isn't enough space for it. Number one and number two is it's caught there's something caught in something where it shouldn't be. Now my issue was the floater, which is over there. You can't see it because it's dark, but it's straight down there on that side. Um so yeah, I'm gonna mess with this. This is the wiring on this side. I'll show you the wiring. Uh so here. That's the top. Let me blow this on with my mouth. That's the top of the fuel pump. Uh, this ledge sits right there. So when you put it back together, you know that's how it should sit. That's how you know the, what correct orientation is. There's literally space for this tab and this is the only space that it'll fit. If you try to put it here, it won't fit because it's too big. Same thing with all the other spots. Okay, so this is how the top hat looks. Raise it up. And this is the wire and just go straight down and the other pump is right there that's the second pump and the first one is over that way as you can see there's a connection on there and it's teed uh, it's teed you can see the T right down there and it's teed to the other pump so I'm gonna change all that uh, I'm gonna try and fix this and get it to work properly oh. And the siphon. The siphon, we believed at some point, this is plugged up to because it creates a vacuum suction thing to suction fuel out of the out of the tank into the bucket, that bucket down there. So we blocked, we removed the siphon and blocked it off, um, thinking that would help fuel flow. But in retrospect, I don't think the siphon was the problem. I believe the T connections were the problem. Because there was a bunch of fit-ins, they were leaking. That's why I say no fit-ins. Just hard mount everything. Just hard mount the wire, um, all the hoses to the direct place. No fit-ins whatsoever. Because they'll start, inevitably, they'll start leaking and giving you fuel problems. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to hard wire the stuff together. And I'll be back. So here is the T connection. Um, just going to give you a quick look at how it how it looks um so there's a t fit in here okay this is custom done because we have to figure out what's going on but when you do yours there will already be an orange line here from the filter coming up and connecting right to the pump so what you should do with that is you need to pull the t connection or sorry the the fit in it's an OEM fitting. It'll be the same color as this. It'll be the same color as this, a little bigger. It'll come from the filter and go right to your pump. Disconnect the T fitting from the pump. Okay. Connect short one of the shorter 516s right to the stock pump. This is how I have uh, mine connected. Technically, you should be buying a. Um, Technically, you should be buying a five um, a quarter, but let me back up one second. So here's the filter. Here's the OEM pump, right? You need to remove the line, the same color line OEM one as this one from here, okay? Because all you have is a pump feeding the filter directly. That's how it's going. And then feed in the and then feed in the engine on this spot right here. The car's gonna stink like fuel for a bit because it just poured it everywhere. But um, 
from right here. So it's pumping from here. It's going through the line that looks like this, going to the filter, and it's pumping out into the engine. That's how it's going. So you want to disconnect from here. Okay. You need to disconnect the line. It'll look like this. And connect the T to that. You're keeping up, right? Disconnect the orange one from here. Connect the T to it on the smaller side T. It'll only the OEM one will only fit the smaller reduce inside. And then you have the fuel pump feed in a T. So now you can go either way. And then you do a disconnection here. You do this one here. And then you do this one directly to the second pump. So now you have this pump from the auxiliary feed in this line here and feed in from here. And then we're going through the filter and up through the engine. Okay. So disconnect OEM from here, connect to the T on the reduce inside of the T. Now you have a pump feed in one uh, a T. So now you just T the connection back to the OEM still okay on filter and to the second pump. This pump helps. So when it turns on, it'll feed, this will feed, and they both go up into the OEM, into the engine area. So that is the um, idea of it. It's very simple, very straightforward, very ghetto looking. Um, but all these hard connections here will help, will help your fuel flow. So there's no leak and it'll help long time reliability because there's no fittings to go bad because of E85. All right, I'm getting high from the fume, so I'm gonna put all this stuff back together and I'll do a recap. All right, so here we are. Everything is sort of back together. Not really. There's the ring there. There's this. I moved the location of the pump. I changed the fitting that goes to the OEM pump because there was a fit in there and it was bleeding pressure when it got hot. So the hose will expand or something weird was going on with the fitting after driving for a while to expand. It forced the car to stop starting. Um, it was a whole ordeal. Of course, all the goddamn trucks and trailers and loud trash cars are passing by right now. But um, so this, the gasket for your fuel pump, for the fuel pump thing, the orange, the orange thing right there. You have to make sure that sits properly all around the fit-in, okay? You have to make sure that fits properly because if you don't, you go to fill up your tank, anything more than half tank, and fuel will pour everywhere. And guess what? When fuel pours everywhere, the fuel pump control module is down here somewhere and it gets wet and it, there's a very high chance that you will destroy your fuel pump control module. You know, so what? Don't just replace it. Well, the tank has to be dropped from underneath and it's a whole ordeal. It takes a, it takes a long time to get, get to it. So be careful. Make sure it's not pinched anywhere. Just gonna inspect it. Stick your fingers in underneath um, the other side using your pinky probably would help make sure the back side isn't pinched and then you just set it down straight well <laughs> you gotta make sure um, make sure this is aligned just right oh, nope nope something weird happened down in the tank so I gotta take it apart again um, I think the I think the auxiliary pump went underneath the fuel filter, so I have to move it. Oh, never mind. It's in. So, there's a lot of wires and stuff. I'm still going to take this off and make sure everything is aligned properly before I set it down. But make sure it's aligned and, yeah, seal it back up and you should be good. I think in part two of this, what I'm going to do is possibly, although a little bit of sad news, that car blew up. So I'm going to be tied up in the funds for a little bit. But when this is done, I'm going to make another one because I have a spare one over there and put that one in line for sale or something. So that at least you guys have the identical fuel bump that I do. On that note, catch you guys in the next video.